Hi, I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead and today I'm out foraging for yarrow specifically because I've got my alembic still set up and I'm going to be distilling some yarrow hydrosol and hopefully even maybe yield some essential oil. Uh, but I wanted to just show you how to identify yarrow today and then talk with you about some of the uses and benefits of yarrow. I think of, you know, people ask me all the time, which herbs do you really, really need to have on your homestead? And, and I would, I always include yarrow in that description because it has so many uses and benefits. And uh, so this is definitely an herb that if it doesn't grow wild near you, and this is wild yarrow here, then I suggest cultivating it. And I also cultivate yarrow myself. I, that's how important it is to me. I love seeing it wild and I want to protect the wild population. And so I also cultivate it uh, for, for further use and I uh, really, really love it. All right, so this is yarrow, Achillea millifolium, uh, that we're actually out in one of our horse pastures here on our little homestead. <laughs> so we're in a field, a rather large one. It looks, it actually goes, wraps around. So I'll be walking over to the other side to get more yarrow, but I will just show you this little nice species or a uh, nice specimen so you can see it. So yarrow has roots like this. They can't, oh, it's not very clear, I don't know why. The roots, the roots kind of grow like, uh, kind of rhizome-like under the ground and they actually spread and propagate partially through the root system. So I don't like pulling it up by the root unless you're in like this massive patch, but the patches here where I live in Idaho they can be a little sparse, um, so I'm careful. Look at the leaves. The leaves have the <laughs> the leaves have little tiny leaflets on them, and those leaflets have little tiny petals. And one of the reasons why Achillea millifolium or yarrow is called this is because of the leaf structure, which is very important in the plant identification. So. We're talking about Achillea, meaning um, Achilles, who was um, f helped fight in the Trojan War. <laughs> he, was, he was a soldier, and that's actually one of the reasons why they call yarrow the soldier's herb. It's extremely wound healing, uh, but the millifolium portion of the Latin name comes from the milla, which means 1,000, and the folium, which means leaves. And look how well it matches, it's just beautiful. And as you go up the stem, you get to the flower head, Look how beautiful those are. So you have tiny little uh, five petaled uh, flowers. Okay. And each of the little uh, flower bunches is on its own separate stalk. This is important because uh, some people will get yarrow mixed up with Queen Anne's lace, uh, although Queen Anne's lace is on what's called an umbral, and an umbral is a little different than this. These are actually individual flower stalks. So you, you definitely wanna be aware of your look-alike herbs and plants, uh, but this is how the flowers look. So they're flat on top, that's one of the indicators. They're not curved, the little bunches are anyway. And this is how they, they present themselves. Very, very beautiful. All right, and I am going to get ready to go distill in a moment, but first I'm gonna to talk to you about the benefits of the herb. So yarrow, uh, beneficial wise, benefit wise, is very, very astringent. And that means that it's, it's, it's it contains a lot of flavonoids and it's the flavonoids that make it astringent, but it is wonderful for, oh, there's a little spider in here. It's wonderful for tightening. Come on, little spider, I don't wanna distill you. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, astringent herbs, especially yarrow, which is extremely drying and astringent, they tighten and tone the mucosal membranes of the body. So even if you take it in tincture form or tea form, like internally, it really does have that action on the body. It's a very drying herb. Um, and it also, it help, it's an anti-catarrhal also because of its astringency in part, but it helps the body to expel excess mucus, which is really helpful if you have a, a cold or you know bronchial issues or lots of mucus in the lungs. It's really helpful for this. I love to use it um, 
in conjunction with a little bit of golden seal just to potentiate the effects of both herbs. Both herbs have similar effects that way. Another uh, reason why I just love, love, love yarrow is that it's a diaphoretic and that means it's useful for when you have a fever, especially at the onset of a flu. It's an amenagogue, and this means that it stimulates the uterus and blood flow uh, in the pelvic region, especially, you know, obviously for women. Um, so it, it even will stimulate blood flow during menstruation and, you know, helps it flow uh, and keep going better. Um, it's a styptic. This is one of my favorite uses for yarrow. Uh, being a hemostat and a styptic herb, this means that it helps uh, with bleeding. It helps uh, with wound healing. In fact, I love having, I keep dr uh, dried powdered yarrow on hand at all times because in compressed form, especially in conjunction and when used with cayenne powder and kale and clay, uh, you can actually make your own quick clot. I've written an article about that, so I'll link to that article above, but uh, there is scientific evidence that uh, it makes a wonderful, wonderful um, blood clotting pack using your natural herbal or herbs in your environment. So please read up on that. Oops. Please read up on that if you're interested in uh, using the herbs around you for your survival and for medicinal reasons. Another way that yarrow is useful is that it is a bitter herb and so therefore it's very good for digestion. Uh, it's an aromatic bitter too. So really I love using it with dandelion uh, leaf and root um, with orange peel. It's delicious and it's got this really nice uh, scent and flavor. It's an antispasmodic and therefore if you have uh, cramping during your menstrual cycle cycle. It can be helpful, especially used topically, uh, the essential oil uh, diluted at, in a rub. I really love using it this way. It is also an anti-inflammatory. And in that sense too, I really enjoy using the essential oil um, in terms of it being an anti-inflammatory because the essential oil is one of the blue oils. And the blue oils contain a chemical called shimazoline that's highly, highly um, anti-inflammatory. And you only need a couple of drops of the essential oil and you have a wonderful, wonderful rub for you know sore muscles or, or hurt joints, things like that. Um, it is a mild sedative. It can actually help uh, lower blood pressure, which is also helpful if you're dealing with painful situations. Um, one of the problems with uh, being injured or having wounds is the blood pressure goes up. And if you're working with a, a person who has high blood pressure to begin with, that can be very dangerous. So, so just knowing that yarrow can lower blood pressure is something uh, that can be helpful for you. Uh, contra indication though for that is that if you're on blood pressure medications you need to understand that this can um, perhaps uh, act in opposite to the blood pressure medications if it's for low blood pressure or it can potentiate the effects of high blood pressure medication so you might want to speak with your doctor about taking yarrow uh, but if it's for short-term use it might be okay just do your research on that and by the way I'm not a medical doctor I'm an herbalist and an aromatherapist and I um, have been studying anatomy and physiology for many, many years. And that uh, means that I can make suggestions about medicinal herbs, but I am not giving medical advice. This is not meant for medical advice. It is simply for information. Uh, so have fun with that. <laughs> it's an anti-inflammatory, which I just spoke about. Um, another reason that yarrow is wonderful, and by the way, it was used heavily during the Civil War, uh, you know, the battle between the states, uh, when there were there were really no uh, drugs or medications, and many of these men were having legs amputated, they were bleeding out in the fields. Well, the nurses, the women who were working with the men would gather up yarrow and use it. Another problem with the soldiers was that they had dysentery or extreme diarrhea and many of them died from just dehydration from the dysentery. Well yarrow can be helpful for diarrhea as well. So another another way it just tightens and tones those uh, inner uh, mucosal tissues including the colon and uh, areas that your intestines that might need to be tightened up in, in extreme cases. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, more contraindications. I just explained to you about uh, if you have blood pressure 
a high or low and you're on medications, be aware of what it can do. Um, another contraindication is that because it has such strong actions on the uterus, pregnant women should not use yarrow internally. For external use, it's okay, but internal use is not okay. And there is some research that it might be mildly phototoxic. However, I've never had any issues with that ever. <laughs> So just be aware of that. If you're using the essential oil, you might just want to know that and keep it covered. Um, and as always, you know, if you are using the essential oil or, an inf or the infused herbal oil, be sure to do a patch test. What you do there is you rub a little bit of the uh, herbal preparation on your wrist and let it sit for 24 hours. If you have any ir irritation at all, then you might not be a person who wants to use yarrow. So one thing I get asked uh, about by my students quite often in my herbalism courses about yarrow is this. Is it okay to use the colored yarrow? All right, so most wild yarrow is white. You might actually find some wild yarrow that is a lavender or um, a beautiful purple color. But uh, the hybrids that you buy at the nurseries are often uh, like this. They're brightly colored. They're just gorgeous. They're beautiful uh, plants and flowers. Generally speaking, what you're going to see, you can see the difference in the size of the flowers between the wild ones. The flowers may not be as big or they may be different shaped. And so I always say this, there's, there's conflicting information on this and, and no herbalist really truly agrees, I think, on many things. <laughs> but. Um, you know, because it's such a long history of folk tradition, mainly. Uh, but with the colored yarrow or the hybridized yarrow, I prefer not to use it for medicinal reasons. I prefer to go gather the wild uh, white yarrow or the yarrow that I've cultivated that I know is not a hybrid. So that's my choice. Um, with that said, some herbalists do say, go ahead and use the hybrid. Go ahead and use the colored yarrow. It's going to not make a difference. And some will say, go ahead and use it, but it will make a slight difference. So there you go, your answer on that. I hope you enjoyed this little discussion about uh, how to identify. Here's the leaves again. I don't know if you can see those really ferny little leaves. How you can identify yarrow in the field and what to watch out for. Again, this is not an umbral like an umbrella. This is more of uh, flat, separate stalks, okay? So there's yarrow. And uh, little five-petaled tiny flowers all clustered together with a flat top. All right. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you go harvesting some yarrow and especially I hope that you cultivate it in your garden area or you know wherever you live because it is excellent. It's a wonderful medicinal herb. Please subscribe to my channel if you're watching this on YouTube. If you are a student, I would love for you to tell us your experiments with yarrow inside the student group and uh, share any questions that you have because I am always there for you to answer questions. Check out my School of Botanical Arts and Sciences. I'm, I'm very, very in the group <laughs> myself, plus other experienced herbalists and aromatherapists. All right, I love you guys. I will talk with you later. See you see in the field. Thank you.